Hey friends, Kevin Noe here again from Fight Designer LLC and the YouTube channel. Uh, whew, welcome to summer, it's getting hot. Um, I've been packing up some stuff and that got me thinking about like, oh, you know what? I don't think I've ever actually shared these on YouTube. So I've got some, uh, some catching up to do apparently. Um, so before I, I finish packing up all my gear, um, I wanted to share a couple of things. And th these were both featured in the Theatrical Firearms Handbook and probably mentioned also in the Screen Combat Handbook, but I figured I could actually show you the real deal. So these were a solution to a problem where we had a, a character in a movie, uh, Bullets, Blood, and Fistful of Cash, or, or it was also released just as Cash in some places with a dolly sign for yes. Um, and the hero uses primarily either revolvers or shotguns. That meant that we used a, a number of actual firearms because you can use those with blanks and they'll cycle just fine. But of course, blanks are not entirely safe, uh, especially when you're talking 12 gauge blanks. Full load 12 gauge blanks are, are really, that's a lot of powder. So we had, uh, you know, different movie I was on, the shockwave from one of those blasted the plastic face off a clock that was on the wall, like 30 feet up and 50 feet back in this warehouse. Um, when the director of, of Cash, uh, Sam Aquino, wanted to do a over the shoulder, looking down the barrel, close range, multiple shots. I had to explain why that wasn't safe, so I took the, the 12 gauge blank and some boxes from craft services and blew some holes in them, and he said, okay, so what can we do? So my answer to a couple of different things in terms of just not having some props, uh, sawed off being kind of, you know, illegal without special tax stamp and hard to get, um, or with point blank shots and things like that was to use those little champagne party popper things, the little fireworks, uh, where you pull a little string and it uh, sets off a little firecracker that shoots some paper confetti strings out. So I found out through experimentation that if you cut those down a bit and uh, dump out the, the paper confetti stuff and instead put in some flash cotton, I tried flash paper, it burns a little slower, uh, you can get sort of a, a muzzle flash effect. And so I did that for a number of shotguns, including some uh, Mad Max style sawed off 12 gauge double barrel, as well as this is, this is one that, uh, uh, that I used where it, it has since broken. Um, the last section of barrel broke. Um, but you can see now that the inner barrel of this cheap pump airsoft uh, spring gun, I have some monofilament, which I was running down through the inner barrel uh, and poked out kind of out through the way the safety came in. Maybe see it sticking out a little bit there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. So there's a little bit there and I just tied it up with tape the last time that I had it because it's kind of a pain in the butt stringing that through. And that's a reset time is a precious thing on set. When people are sitting around waiting, you don't want to be sitting there fumbling and saying, oh, wait, wait, I almost got it. Hang on. Oh, shoot, I missed. Let me try again. Um, so I've got some monofilament strung through there right now and just kind of wrapped around so that it was ready to go pop the thing on and what would happen was our hero who was played by Tom Doty a large guy would sit here with, with his shotgun he could go through that action and just mime it and what I would do is hide behind his back because he's a large guy again hide behind his body with that monofilament running under his arm and so I'd just be sitting there and I'd boop yank that little bit of monofilament which was tied onto the string on the party popper would set off a little flash cotton load and go out the front so this allowed me to do something that was entirely safe, really up close even. You can set off flash cotton in your hand even. I wouldn't do it in my face, but you get the idea. Pretty darn safe, as much as you're gonna get for a practical effect. And this was a very practical effects heavy movie on film back in the day. Um, but it means you got one shot and then you got some reset time while you're trying to get another going. So that was the, the downside. Um, in theory, if I was really cranking this out, I could sometimes string two bits of uh, monofilament down and just uh, that'd make reload time essentially a little bit faster. Um, I got a little better with the, the double barrel because um, I could do one on each, the Mad Max style. But this was the kind of the, the most unique bit. So there's a bit of action in that movie in, a, in an alley fight where the hero rams the barrel of his shotgun through the torso ugh, of one of the bad guys, picks him up over his shoulder, uses him as a shield and is firing through his body at other people was the gag as written. And so my solution to try and figure out how to do this was I had another one of these that I just cut off uh, shorter. Actually, it, it might've been a stump attachment to this one. I can't remember because the actual barrel I think was longer. It was, I was trying to duplicate a real one we had that had a, a more of a hunting length barrel. So I think I, I had the PVC extension to make it look like this was this length. And then I had the cutoff version, which was kind of flush with the, the magazine cap. Um, and then 
I had this, which was made to look like the last bit of the barrel. And this could be attached to the, the actor playing the, the bad guy who got picked up and used as a shield. And we could poke that through his shirt. And this was to run the, the monofilament. So I could feed the monofilament through there, through this tube. And again, I could hide behind both of them and pull that string and get a little flash poof, to go out through there. And I tested this, it worked fairly well. I did on set, it worked fine. This was just white PVC though. And so uh, there was at least one take where I was doing some touch-ups on set with a little bit of spray paint and it was dry enough to touch, but I guess there was still some fumes because it went off, the barrel kind of stayed on fire as the, the spray paint was still burning. Um, but, you know, I, I thought it was a, a, one of the, an example of one of those interesting kind of like, who'd have thought that I'd been trying to figure out how to do this on set. Uh, and now I've got this kind of interesting memento of, uh, of the project, which I don't know if I'll ever use for anything ever again, but it's, I, I haven't had the heart to throw it out. The actual shot didn't make it into the, the film per se, but at least one of the screenings that I saw, there were some outtakes at the end during the credits, which let me know why. And that was we shot it in profile, and I was busy hiding behind the guy pulling the string, so I couldn't be watching a monitor. Again, we're shooting film, so you can't just play it back real quick. You gotta wait a couple of months until it got sent off and developed and sent back, and we raised the money to be able to do that. Um, so it was really hard to, to check your footage. And unfortunately, what happened was the person who was holding the shotgun and the, the angle of the barrel ended up being at completely different angles, like it was comically off. So it looks like, uh, Looks like the, the barrel had somehow kind of bent when it got jammed through the guy, uh, and, and it, it was an unintentionally comic effect. Right? So for this to work, it would have to be held relatively straight to maintain the illusion uh, that that was jammed through the person and sticking out. And uh, we did not have enough people able to watch a monitor. So again, this was this was film back then, not, uh, not digital. Um, and uh, so those are the kinds of things that slip through the cracks sometimes when you're uh, when you're not able to monitor the footage necessarily, with an eye towards oh, is that action working? Are, are things going off like they should? I'm looking for Hector Gonzalez, and I'm not going to ask you twice. He runs a club over on the south side of town with his cousin, uh, Pablo. It's called the Soleil. That's all I know. Thanks.
Damaris, you take care of everything. Um, no. Well, what the fuck happened? I think he killed everybody. Oh, that sucks. I told him about the Soleil. I'm sorry, boss. I... I think I'm gonna die. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that too, kid. Well, I probably better leave you alone. Yeah, you, you, you take care of yourself now. Okay. Bye-bye. Not a perfect success, but certainly something I learned from and an interesting experiment, and somebody else could probably do it better than I did. These days, would you even bother? Would you just do, uh, you know, a, a CG effect or have an LED light in there or something? Probably. There's probably better ways to do it now. Um, but, uh, you know, there's something to be said for having a little little fireball and something that looks, looks fairly real and kind of cool, but is still pretty safe. If nothing else, I think it speaks to the spirit of independent filmmaking, where it's about, we've got this much money, this is what's in the script, how can we tell this story, do we have a way to make this gag work? And if so, how? Uh, this is not necessarily a role model of like, this is what you should do, but it's an example of what you can do, and I look forward to seeing what you can do with your ingenuity and your challenges and your stories uh, later. So feel free to, to drop things in the comments, uh, email me, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, you may not get any of these for a while, because like I said, I'm packing up a bunch of my stuff, uh, and I'll, I'll give updates when I can, but uh, until then, thanks, play safe, be, sa be safe, be healthy, be sane, uh, and try to look good while doing it, and uh, until next time, this is Kevin Inouye, kevininouye.com, fightdesigner.com, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Sucks. Okay. Bye bye.